All right, in this video, everyone, we're gonna go over the basics of how to do um, the surveying a level loop calculations. All right, so uh, before we get started, we need to make sure we understand what um, a level loop is and uh, what the foresight and the backsight are. So a level loop, uh, the concept behind a level loop is that when you survey, you survey in a circle, and when you end up back at your original spot, you gotta hopefully end up back at the same elevation or within a certain uh, amount, uh, you know, difference of the elevation that is small enough that it's essentially uh, negligible. All right, and so uh, as we see here, when you survey a level loop, you sometimes have to look backwards or forwards, a backsight or a foresight. Uh, so I'm going to draw kind of a sketch of what I mean by that. So when you come out to a construction site, um, at you know at some location on the construction site, there's going to be what's called a uh, building monument, uh, BM for short, and that building monument has a known fixed elevation. All right, so um, known fixed elevation and then once you shoot the elevation to that then you are able to go up forward and take the elevation of other places so what a surveyor will do is they'll first put the rod here and they will then set up their tripod somewhere else all right and they will look back here see what the reading is all right and what that will tell them is what is the height of the uh, of the um, of the uh, instrument. All right, so that's your back sight because you're looking from the instrument back to uh, the, uh, the the rod, and then they'll turn around and say like this is the uh, the location of their first point of interest. They'll put the rod here, and they're looking forward. So again, this is the rod, and so they turn and they look forward and they see what that is, and then um, that's their foresight, and that will tell them the, the, the elevation here. So what they do is from the building monument elevation, say that's like zero, um, if you get uh, like a 4.5, that means the height of the, uh, the instrument is 4.5 feet above here so you kind of went up 4.5 feet and then say this is like two uh, they had to then go so you have to go up on the back site and then to get the height of the instrument and then down uh, so 4.5 minus 2 would get 2.5 that would be the elevation of that point there all right so that's a rough kind of explanation of how this all works uh, and why we're going to be adding the back site and subtracting the foresight each time all right, so uh, to get ourselves started, I have an introduction problem set up on, uh, on our uh, sheet here, or our presentation. And so um, this is our building monument, which I'm saying right here, you can see in blue, it's, uh, I'm saying it's at an elevation of 100.00 feet. This is the first place to put up the, the tripod. I'm gonna make this uh, a little bit larger here so we can see it more clearly. All right, and then uh, the the back sight, the first back sight looking from the tripod back here, they're saying is 7.13 feet, and then looking forward, the foresight looking forward to the uh, first point of interest is 4.26 feet. All right, so how do you uh, do this calculation? Uh, so for uh, what I would put in here is the building monument, the elevation is 100.00. The back site looking back to the, the building monument is 7.13. So the height of the instrument, HI, is, you see the plus sign, it's the elevation plus that, so it's 100, uh, oops, 107.13. All right, and then my next point of interest is TP1, TP-1. And the foresight there is 4.26. So I take the height of the instrument and I subtract 4.26. So, um, oops, let me, uh, so it's 100, 
I added 7.13, and then I take that and I subtract. And the easiest way in the calculator to do that is just hit the subtract button. That way I'll take the previous number and subtract, uh, 4.26. And so the, the elevation of this first point of interest, as the calculator says, is 102.87. And then what you would do is you would pick up, you, you would leave the rod here, the person holding the rod stays here, and then it's just like they're leapfrogging each other. The instrument then moves to the next thing, you take a back sight to the rod, and then you move the rod over to here. All right, so the, the rod would, uh, you know, leapfrog over that to there, okay? Uh, and then this uh, explains these calculations again, and then we go to the next one, and again, um, from this new station, this new uh, location where we put the, the instrument, our back sight is 1.75 feet, and our foresight is 2.99 feet. All right, so uh, the back sight back to TP1 is 1.75. So you take 102.87, you add that. So just hit the plus sign, add 1.75. So it's 104.62 is the height of the instrument at this location. And then going to TBM, whatever that is, um, we are going to take the foresight of 2.99 and subtract 104.62. Oops, clear. So minus 2.99, hit enter. So we get 101.63. So the elevation of that point right there is 101.63. Okay? And again, they would just keep on leapfrogging. Now the instrument would leapfrog the rod to here, and then the rod would leapfrog to there, uh, so on and so forth. Again, this is just, again, highlighting or showing the calculations again. Um, this next slide kind of fast forwards a little bit. It just gives you all the, the rest of the numbers. So again, the back sight to here is 5.62. Uh, the foresight to here is 6.01. Uh, when you move the uh, instrument again, the back sight back to TP2, it's saying is 0 0.94. The foresight to TP3, so when the, the rod uh, leapfrogs to here, it's 7.98. And then the final set of readings, the, the, um, the uh, instrument looks back at TP3, so the back sight is 9.12. And the foresight, again, it's all a loop. It always goes in a big loop. The foresight going uh, back to the, uh, or yeah, going to the uh, building monument, the original building monument, is 3.34 feet. Okay? And so this is where we left off. So the back sight looking back to the uh, TBM is 5.62. And so we add that. So we would say plus 5.62 is 107.25. And then the foresight to TP2 is 6.01. So minus 6.01, because foresight is always subtracted to get back down to the elevation of TP1. Sorry, not TP2. So that would be 101.24. And then the back sight from the instrument back to TP2 is 0 0.94. So we add 0 0.94, so plus 0 0.94. We have 102.18. And then our foresight looking uh, to TP3 is 7.98. So we um, would then take 102.18 and subtract 7.98, get 94.20. And then looking for, uh, then when we move the instrument to here, we look back at TP-3, and we get a backside of 9.12, so we add that, 94.20, plus 9.12, we get 103, 103.32, and then our final reading is 
our foresight back to the building monument where the foresight is 3.34 and so we subtract 3.34 and you see we end up at 99.98 all right so um, that's the calculations here that's what you see on this page here so that's how we got these calculations how we got these numbers all right and then what you'll notice is the original elevation was 100. The final elevation was 99.98. And so you see we did not get exactly back to where we started. Um, but as a surveyor, it's not about being exactly perfect. It's is it good enough? So the actual error is the difference between those two, 100.00 minus 99.98 and that's 0 0.02 feet and the the idea is you know in reality there's always going to be some level of error is it acceptable is the uh, level of uh, error acceptable all right and the way in which you uh, do this anal analysis is the, the closure error or the the allowable error is you do this calculation which kind of seems like a, a random calculation um, but it's it's what's with what the industry uses. It's 0 0.007 times the square root of the length of the, um, the loop divided by 100. Okay, uh, so it sounds kind of weird, um, but remember the way in which we find the, uh, the, uh, the distance is we use the top stadia and bottom stadia um, from you know, when we take our readings, we don't just take that middle reading. We take the bottom stadium, the, bo uh, the top stadium, the bottom stadium. We take the difference, multiply by 100, um, and go from there. Okay. So um, let me just try to find. All right. Uh, all right. It was this screen right here. So I'm not expecting. You know, on, on the next uh, practice problem, we're going to actually go through all of this stuff. Uh, and do this right now. We're going to fast forward and just look at the distance of each one of these. So um, let me try to explain. Um, what they're basically saying is, you see the 300 here? That means the distance from the building mon monument to the first instrument reading was 300 feet. And we'll, again, go through the details of how this stuff was figured out uh, in the next practice problem. This distance here uh, from the instrument to TP-1 was 286 feet. Um, the distance of this section here was 290 feet. The distance here was also 290 feet. The distance here um, is 210 feet. And the distance here is 214 feet. The distance here is 180 feet. The distance here is 192 feet. The distance here was 260 feet and then the last distance is 248 feet. And if you're asking where did I get these numbers, it's this column here, distance right here, okay? So the total distance, and you know, you could write that stuff here. That's what they did. Um, that reading was 300 feet, then 286 feet, 290 feet, 290 feet, uh, 210 feet, 214 feet, 180 feet, 192 feet, 260 feet, and then 248 feet, which means what we're really interested in is the total distance around that loop. If you add up all these numbers, you get 2,470 feet. All right? We need that so that way we can figure out what the allowable error is. using the formula 0 0.007 times the square root of the total distance, 2,470 feet, divided by 100. So we do that in this calculator. So 0 0.007 times the uh, square root, so second square root of 2,470 divided by 100. Hit enter. So the allowable error is 0 0.034 round to 8. So what they're saying is, with the length of this loop, you can be, you can have an issue at the end or an error at the end of 3.0348 feet, and it's still considered good. 
All right, so is ours good? Is our actual error, you, want all, you always want the actual error to be less than the allowable. Is that the case? 0 0.02 feet, is it less than 0 0.0348 feet? And the answer is yes, so we are good. And that's the basics of how this stuff is done for a level loop. Um, in the next uh, problem, uh, so in practice problem, this is the intro problem, but in practice problem one, uh, I'll go over a video, and there I'll go into a little bit more detail of the top stadium and bottom stadium. It's the exact same problem in terms of, you know, foresight, backsight, and doing this calculation, and then at the end we're going to do the allowable error calculation, but I will go over more detail of how these distances were figured out. Okay? Do you have any questions? Ask your teacher.